few uh, Pro Bowl announcements to be made. And I'm scrolling through, scrolling through, and I see, uh, I get the email from the Vikings that says three players have made the Pro Bowl. I thought, only three, huh? This is a pretty good football team. I thought, well, okay, maybe there were uh, more running backs that were great this year than I thought. Or maybe Harrison Smith didn't get the attention this year that he deserved. Um, but instead, Eric Hendricks gets left off and Kirk Cousins gets left off. And uh, Sage Rosenfels, a crime has been committed. I don't care that much about the Pro Bowl, but this is a crime for both Eric Kendricks and Kirk Cousins to not be in the Pro Bowl. I, I mean, I look at Kendricks, I think he's a all pro player, you know, which is sort of the first team of all the Pro Bowlers. It's the it's the uh, of and in combining both uh, the NFC and the AFC. I, I mean, I thought he had an absolutely fantastic year. He was so consistent. He was so good. He came through time and time again. He has a really, really tough responsibility in the fact that he's a sort of a run stopper as a no linebacker. And he seems like he's covering people, either it's running backs or tight ends all the time and it was just fantastic consistently throughout the year and obviously cousins you know statistically he's right up there with the top three four quarterbacks in the nfl and so that's surprising also that he didn't make uh the pro bowl stefan diggs it, did he not make it as well he did not make it and uh, that's that's I, surprising too i mean yep. there's a lot of really good receivers out there i mean the the, the receiver group is extremely impressive but still uh, you know, he's got to go against Julio Jones and Michael Thomas and Mike Evans and and uh, and Chris Godwin. But, uh, you know, I, I put him in front of Chris Godwin, you know, two Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receivers. And I mean, they probably had great stats, but they're you know, they're a bad football team and they're always losing. So they probably throw the ball a ton. It doesn't mean the, the receivers should be making the Pro Bowl. So I think that's another snub. Those three guys just off the top of my head uh, come to mind as three snubs for the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, even the the year that Anthony Harris has had, he's second in the NFL in interceptions. And when the entire Baltimore Ravens roster makes it and a team like the Vikings with as much talent here and a much guy as many guys having good seasons ends up with three. It is just really surprising, but not super shocking. Now, I will give you an example. By the way, my, when I was in Miami in 2002, we had eight pro bowlers. And we were nine and seven. <laughs> All right, we had seven on defense and we had Ricky Williams on offense. So I, I guess the rest of the guys were uh, struggling at times. Um, well, just usually when teams have uh, such a good season, I mean, this has been a very, very good season for Minnesota. Ten yep. and four is not easy to do in the NFL. And to have only three guys make the Pro Bowl to me is a bit shocking. And also, you know, Viking, I don't know how the, all the voting goes, but I know, you know, Vikings fans and stuff. Uh, you know, they're, they're huge. Do they still have fans vote for the Pro Bowl? I'm not even sure how it gets picked. So it's uh, a mix now between fans and players. And, gotcha. Um, you well, know, I imagine know. Vikings fans came through. I mean, they've been coming through all year. They've been showing up to away yeah. game stadiums yep. and, and, um, and, you know, making noise uh, down in Kansas City and obviously out in, in L.A. last week. So I don't know. I just don't know how the NFL missed uh, some of these other really, really good players. As I said, for me in particular, Eric Kendricks. That is a that is a shame. And he's a guy that may not be able to make it, you know, year after year after yep. year, like a Harrison Smith. Uh, and that's what really stinks is those guys that have such great seasons, then they get snubbed. And, you know, they, they may only have another couple opportunities in, in their career just based off of their position and and their age and all those types of things. And and he definitely should have made it this year. Now, in 2017, Harrison Smith missed the initial cut. And eventually did make it with guys dropping out and you know, clearly. But he was all pro, right? But he, he was, was all, all pro, pro right? which I think there's the a case Bowl. for Eric Hendricks to have the same thing happen, where he ends up missing the initial cut of the Pro Bowl, eventually making the Pro Bowl, uh, assuming the Vikings aren't in the Super Bowl, and How then many, you ahead, know, was, and then being all pro. I, I think that's very reasonable for that to happen to Eric Hendricks. It, very, very possible. And, and you would much rather be all pro. Oh, much rather be. I'm sorry, I believe all pro is combining both the NFC and the AFC as sort of like the all star team of the whole league. Yes, correct. Which would literally make him like the best middle linebacker in the NFL. So sometimes when guys get snubbed for the Pro Bowl, I almost think that they have a, you know, they, they get the the votes more for the uh, for, for being an all pro. So how many Pro Bowls do you think Daniil Hunter will have over the course of his career? Of course, <laughs> oh, this is one of those question. things we'd have to go back, you know. 12 years from now, go back to this, you know, this question on whatever today's date is in December of 2019. We can save but, the audio. 
Yeah, we'll save we'll save this audio. But uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I would think it's gonna be uh, five, six Pro Bowls, maybe even more over the course of his career. Yeah, I mean, he's our. This is his second. He was in the Pro Bowl last year, and there's no sign of slowing down whatsoever. He's got incredible durability, which isn't something we really talk about a lot. But every year of his career, aside from his rookie year when he clearly was not the player he is now, he's played 16 games since he's been a starter for the last three seasons and is trending that way this year to play 16 games again. So if he continues to stay this healthy and you think how young he is, 25 years old and he's been in the league since 2015. And not only that is so from an offense perspective, as I walked the line of scrimmage, you know, Daniel Hunter would be generally to my right. He's Mm -hmm. the pro he was the defensive end. That's usually on the side of the tight end. Usually the lesser of the two defensive ends plays that position. And usually statistically, that position, uh, Daniel Hunter's position, has fewer sacks than the other side. Yep. Uh, and so the fact that he is putting the numbers he puts up in both, and he's very good against the run, too. I mean, not only can he hold the point, as they like to say, which basically means hold his ground. All the time, it's double teams between, between the tackle and tight end, uh, but also the way he runs things down from uh, from the backside or whatever. I mean, he's good against the run, and he's so so good rushing the passer that, uh, you know, I, I wonder if, you know, let's just say that they let Everson Griffin move on at some point as his age uh, becomes more and more a factor in his career. If they, if I, I wonder what Daniel Hunter's numbers would be if he played on the other side, uh, which is mostly just, you know, you one-on-one with the tackle. Uh, I think he'd probably put up a, you know, three, four more sacks every year if he played the other defensive defensive end position as well. It is wild. And Mike Zimmer alluded to this himself by saying, this isn't even the finished product yet. And you and I have talked about this before with defensive ends is a lot of times they just keep getting better and better and better. And they don't always have to retire at age 31 or something like that. A lot of times they can go much longer than that. And I look at Daniil Hunter as a guy who could be like a Cameron Wake, a guy who could be like a Julius Peppers that has that tall, lanky frame. I um, see Jason Taylor, but he's Jason like, Taylor, yeah. but better against the run. I mean, I see, I mean, Jason Taylor's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so I, you know, you see, look at his body type, the the length that he has, uh, and just, you know, his sort of just physical makeup and the way he can move and the way he can run that he reminds me of Jason Taylor, except for Jason wasn't as big in particular in the upper body, uh, that, uh, Daniel Hunter is. So, I mean, that, that to me, that's for me, that's my comparison. I, I might go, I might go eight. I think he's going to make eight pro bowls, eight pro bowls. I, yeah. I just don't see any reason why he would slow down. And I don't think it's any sort of flash in the pan. And there is more to do technique wise. As these guys grow, you often see them add to their toolbox of pass rush moves. And you're right. Eventually it would make sense for him to move over to that left side and get those one-on-one opportunities and continue to be a double digit sack guy for a really, really long time. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's crazy at all to say he could just continue to make the pro bowl time and time again. Uh, Sage, we got to talk about Kirk cousins, case here. I, I mean, Aaron Rodgers goes in. That to me is name recognition because Rogers under whatever statistical measure you look at it or, or the eye test, if you want, he has not been as good as Kirk cousins this year. Now, if you're giving a lifetime achievement award, of course, Aaron Rodgers has had a better career and peak Aaron Rodgers is better than peak Kirk cousins. But whatever metric you want to go off, if you want to go the PFF grade route, Kirk Cousins is fourth in the NFL. The only quarterbacks rated higher than him are Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, and Lamar Jackson. And and right behind him is Deshaun Watson. So he is in really, really great company. He's got 111 quarterback rating to Rodgers 100. Uh, They both have won a lot of games. So it's not like one guy has won a lot more than the other. Kirk is averaging a whole yard per attempt more than Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is. I mean, like it's it's hard to get too angry about Pro Bowls because whatever it is fan voting. I never watched like the game, by the way. And and it's the, it's the worst I event refuse. in sports on the field. But yeah. for these people, you want justice to be served, right? You want the right guys to get recognized and to have Aaron Rodgers, who's having a pretty mediocre year compared to Cousins, who's having his career year. It just is the wrong decision. Well, I think, you know, football is the ultimate team sport, and this is one of those few sort of individual, you know, trophies that they, they do hand out. And so that the players that when they earn it, that, uh, and then, and, and, you know, Kirk Cousins 
is not going to have seven Pro Bowls in his career, right? But Aaron Rodgers has who knows how many. So I, there definitely is that thing. They used to say a lot of times, this is probably with Kendricks also, um, but a lot of times they'll say you have to make a Pro Bowl. Uh, you sort of have to get screwed one time to make it in the second right time they'll give it to like him the that. next year yeah. yeah so you know maybe kirk has if kirk comes back and has another year similar to this year next year and again aaron Rodgers has a similar year as this year next year i'd like to think that kirk cousins would get in next year because he sort of proved it uh this year with his play yeah that's probably right and it's uh it's sort of frustrating for I'm sure him and the team because they want to push out. We got all these pro bowls and things like that. And I just want the right guys to have it. And I love Sage, you know, this, I, I love lists and, and things like that. I love to have, uh, you know, the, the NFL 100 I have debates about this guy should be in that guy should be in. And of course we always think everyone's got it wrong all the time. Um, but in this case, it's just super easy to present the numbers as a clear uh, an obvious argument that cousins has been better. And I don't know if he's going to be this good next year. You know, things can change. People get hurt. People leave. Kevin Stefanski is going to be head coach of somebody else. You know, you don't know how that's going to go. So for him to have Rogers make it instead, is just, I don't know. You just kind of throw up your hands. Well, that, and you know, CJ ham didn't make the, Pro I know Bowl, they did not you know? feature the Vikings fullback. They gave, they gave it to, uh, I don't know. Kyle use check, like, which I understand. Juszczyk. Yes. Yes. I mean, he ran the option the last offense. week. I mean, that's sort of a, or was it two weeks ago or something? They, they actually hand the ball and they ran the option, uh, for, you know, for a touchdown. So, you know, he's multifaceted, but, uh, that, that would have been nice to him for him to get some recognition. It's I, I always like it when guys who haven't even been in the conversation in the past uh, are, are at least in the conversation. You know, to me, that's that's a recognition when the fans are talking about it, when we're talking about it. You know, we watch all these games and uh, you, know, you, you can't control everything. And there is that name recognition thing. But uh, uh, sometimes you got to start with at least people like us talking about it in hopes that maybe next year, uh, if they have a similar performance or better, that they will get in. Yeah, I thought um, just based on even the traditional statistics, because sometimes you have to dive deeper in. And Kendricks is one of those guys. I mean, tackle numbers don't really tell you who's great. You could be making those tackles behind the line of scrimmage or 10 yards down the field. And a lot of times the worst teams in the league will have a lot of, you know, a linebacker with a lot of tackles because he's on defense a lot and they're blowing through the front line and he's running into people and falling over. Um, so that it's harder to statistically look at a linebacker and talk about what kind of season he's having when it's an inside linebacker, but a quarterback it should have been pretty easy to look and say, all right, well, he's had one of the three best seasons of any NFC quarterback and he's in, but he's not. And that's how it goes.